Hi, I'm glad to talk to you again. My name is Igor Smirnov, I'm International Grandmaster and a chess coach. In this video, I'm going to show you one interesting opening line. I'm talking about the first move, b3. Maybe you think that it's something ridiculous, but I'm sure that after this lesson you will change your opinion. Uh, by the way, a little time ago Nakamura won the game against Ponomarev, a former world champion, by using this first move b3. You see, it's not so inoffensive as it looks. And now I will show you the, the concrete lines and concrete ideas about it. But first a few gener generalities. So why the move b3 is good and why you can use it. The first idea is that it's unknown. Of course, this is a great advantage nowadays when everyone has computer and everyone spends a lot of time on opening preparation. Most probably your opponent knows nothing about b3 really. And this is good for you. The second argument for this move is that it's normal. What do I mean by that? When you play something strange, something like f4 or some gambit lines, you take risk. And you may appear in a trouble in an opening, you may even lose the game early in an opening. When you play b3, you don't break any rules, any strategic rules, any opening rules. Everything is okay. You don't create any weaknesses, um, you don't make anything bad here. So, in any case, you will get a good position. You have no risk here after b3. I can tell you only one drawback of this opening variation, first move b3. If black makes correct moves, you will have an equal position. Well, usually we want to get an advantage when you're playing white. So, this is the only disadvantage of the variation b3, but you see, it's not that huge disadvantage. Okay, even if you get an equal position, it's okay, you will still play on and you will take your advantage in the middle game. These were the general ideas, and now I'll tell you more specific strategic ideas behind the move b3. The first idea. By playing b3, you don't place your pawns in the center. Instead, you're going to allow black to play e5 and d5, but after that you will attack his central pawns. You will play bishop b2, knight f3, and you will attack his central pawns by your pieces and will undermine them with your pawns. Since the time of Nimzovich, we know that it's not necessary to place your pawns in the center. It's important to take control over the central squares. And you can do it with your pieces or with your pawns, and both ways are possible. So here you use the modern way. You take the control over the central squares by your pieces. There are a lot of openings where we use such strategy, something like Alejandro defense, for example. e4, knight of 6 here, black allows white to create a powerful center, and then he's going to attack these white central pawns. And there are many other similar openings. So this was the first strategic idea behind the move b3. Now the second one. This variation is very flexible. You play b3 and then bishop b2 and at the same time you keep your central pawns intact. Therefore, you can then decide what is the best setup of your pieces depending on the future situation, depending on what black will do here. So this is the second strategic idea. And also there is the third idea about this move, this is rather a tactical idea. When you play b3 and then bishop b2, this bishop puts strong pressure on the black center and on the black skin side. That's why in the middle of the game, white often develops an attack in the center and in the king side exactly, by using the pressure of this bishop. Now we'll analyze some concrete variations and you will see it in more specific situations. Ok, now I'll show you some variations. So the first move is b3, of course black has various possibilities here, but mainly they play e5 or d5. So let's talk about e5 first. White will certainly play bishop b2, taking the pawn. In this situation black should play knight c6, 
The move d6 is also possible, but it leads to the quite same situation as after knight c6. And now white should play e3. The move e3 prepares the move bishop b5, which will attack the pawn and therefore attack the knight and therefore the pawn on the e5. And also e3 maybe prepares the move d4 in some variations. So again, this is very flexible and you can then decide what to do after that. In this position, black has two logical moves, which are d5 or knight of 6. So first we will analyze the main line, which is the most popular, and then we will see other possibilities. Most often black plays knight f6 here. White plays bishop b5. White is going to take on the c6 and then to take the pawn on the e5. That's why black should do something about it. It's quite strange, but the most popular move here for black is bishop d6. So let's analyze it again. In the future I'll show you all other possibilities as well. So what white should do in this position? There is one good idea, one good plan which you can apply here. You will change your bishop on the opponent's knight and then you will place your pawns on the light squares. This is a well-known strategic idea. It was Capablanca who stated that, that you need to place your pawns on the same color as, as the color of your traded bishop. You can do it right away. Take him there, bishop takes, d takes, and then you play d3, and in the future you will play e4. But before that you will go knight d2, knight e2, you will play castling, and you will go e4 then. Now let's see what may happen here. Let's say black makes castling, you play knight d2, black goes rook e8. When you see that black is ready to go e4, it makes sense for you to stop it by playing e4 by yourself. Black will do something. Here, of course, you can play knight f3, and this is possible and it is totally normal. But nevertheless, I recommend that you play knight e2. Because in the middle game, one of your main plans is to push the pawn to the f4, and that's why you want to have this possibility. Black will do something, you make castling, and your next idea is to play f4. Little time ago, I have told you that your main idea here is to use the power of your b2 bishop and to attack the black center and the black skin side. Right now, after the move f4, this becomes your reality. You will use the power of your bishop, the power of your rook on the f-file. Your knight from the e2 may go to the f4 after an exchange of the pawns, or you may place it on the g3. From the g3 square, someone in the future of the knight may go to the f5. Ok, let me delete a few arrows. Ok, your knight from the d2 may go to the c4, someone in the future, or to the f3, and it will attack the pawn on the e5. So these are the typical maneuvers which you can use here. It's very good for you that your plan is clear and simple. It means that you can realize it without any problems, even in a blitz game, without wasting time on your thinking. Ok, this is one variation, now let's go back. to the position before the white's move bishop takes c6. White has a few other good options here. Uh, one of them is the move knight e2. An idea of this move is pretty simple. You are waiting for the black's move a6. Because you know that in any case you are going to take on the c6. That's why when black goes a6, actually he just gives you one additional tempo. And this is good for you. Black may may castling, you will do the same, you will castle, and here most often black goes a6. That's good for you, the a6 move is useless, you were going to take on the c6 anyway, so you take it, then you go d3, and you get the same position with an extra tempo because of the black's useless move a6. This was the second good option for white here in this position. Ok, after bishop b5 and bishop d6. And also there is the third variation, um, which is maybe the most interesting here. 
you can go knight a3. This move has an obvious idea. He wants to go to the c4 and then to attack the black's bishop and the black's pawn on the e5. That's why black has to react. If black makes a logical move a6, as we already know, it's quite helpful for white because you will take on the c6 in any case and after d takes you will go knight c4 and you see that you got quite the same position as we were talking about. You are taking the pawn on the e5, black will probably play something like queen e7, you will play knight e2, then you will make castling and after that in the middle game you have a few possibilities, you can still play f4 and develop an attack in the center and on the king side. Still you can place your central pawns on the light squares, playing d3 and e4, this is still possible as well. So generally your plan is always the same. That's why going back to this position after bishop b5 and bishop d6, I can tell you that you have three good options, bishop c6 right away, knight e2 or knight a3. All of them are good and all of them lead to quite a similar situation. Knight e2 and knight a3 are probably a bit better than immediate take on the c6. Okay, also after knight a3, except the black's move a6, black has one another interesting option, which is knight a5. This move also looks ridiculous, but nevertheless it's quite popular. Thing is, black is preparing the move c6, which will push away the white's bishop, and will prepare a retreat bishop c7. Here white should play bishop e2. This is a good idea and you are creating a threat of the move knight b5. You will attack the bishop which cannot retreat because it covers the e5 pawn. Again black has to do something, he should play a6 or c6 and after that you will play c4. This move gives you an additional control over the central squares, it also allows your knight to go back on the c2, which will be closer to the center, so it's better for you. And after that black will do something, let's see, he castles, you go knight c2, after that you will go d4, knight f3, you will make castle, and everything is okay. In this position, the black's position are mis the black's position are normal, but his pieces are misplaced. This bishop on the d6 and knight on the a5 looks strange, and it's not that simple for black to compose a logical normal plan here. This is the problem of the black's position. Also, you have one interesting trick. Um, in this position, you're suddenly threatening to play c5, which is possible in response to any move of black actually not just for example black plays b5 you can respond c5 and if black bishop goes away you will take the pawn on the e5 if he takes on the c5 you will win the piece after a b4 double attack Let's start from the initial position and we will analyze other possibilities. b3, e5, bishop b2 attacking the pawn, knight c6, e3, knight f6 and bishop b5. We have seen all these moves already and here we analyze the move bishop d6. Another option which is even more logical is the move d6, protecting the pawn on the e5. In this situation white also has a few possibilities. One of them is to play d4 right now. This is very logical because, as we know, the bishop on the b2 is one of the key pieces in your position and of course you should make it active. The black's pawns on the d6 and on the e5 restrict the inactivity of the white's b2 bishop. And that's why you need to undermine these pawns and you can do it by playing d4. This move is taking the pawn on the e5 and is preparing the move d5 using the pin over the black side. That's why black should take here, you will take by the queen, you're developing one on our piece, black will probably play a bishop d7, you will take there, you don't want to retreat, bishop takes, 
He is taking the pawn on the g2, by the way. So white will play knight f3, bishop e7, knight c3. Everything is logical here. Black castles, and you make long castling. Now, this position is about equal, but nevertheless, I think that it's easier to play this position for white. You have a battery with a queen and on the bishop looking at the black's gson pawn. Right now it's not so dangerous for black, but in some variations it may be dangerous. Another idea. You will play e4, then rook e1, and you will play in the center. You can then push the pawn from the e4 to the e5, or you can place your knight on the d5 with the support of the pawn from the e4, and therefore your plan is simple and quite effective. At the same time, there is a good question what black should do here, and what black can do. This question is not that simple. Very often they play a5 trying to attack you, but you can stop it very easily by playing a4. And it's over. His attack is over. Uh, black can't really move his knight from the f6, because if he did, you can play knight d5, and you will attack the g7 pawn, which is good for you. That's why, though, the black's position is good, it's quite normal. But it's simpler to play this position for white, practically. That's why I think that this is one of the good options for you. Okay, let's go back. Here is the position after bishop b5 and d6. If you don't want to exchange your bishop on an opponent's knight, you can prepare the move d4 by playing knight f3 or knight e2. For instance, knight f3. This is a good move. e4 is not dangerous for you. You will go knight d4, taking his knight on the c6. That's why often black plays something like bishop d7 or bishop e7. For example, bishop d7, and now you go d4. In this situation, obviously, black has two possibilities. He can take on the d4, or he can play e4. We will analyze both of them. Let's say he takes, you take by the knight, of course, by the knight. You don't want to take by the pawn, because this will close your own bishop. That's why you must take by the knight. And after that, if black takes on the d4, we will get the position which we already have seen. We have seen something similar. Bishop takes, then queen takes d4, you will play knight c3, long castle, and everything is good. Again, a position is about equal, but anyway, white is slightly more active, and you have a little more initiative position. Of course, black can not take there, he can play bishop e7, this is a normal move. In this situation you can just castle, or you can take on the c6, which is quite interesting. Bishop takes, b takes, and queen f3. This is the variation which I recommend you to use, it's more aggressive, and you're taking the pawn on the c6 right now. The natural response for black is c5. This is a very typical mistake. A lot of my opponents play this move automatically, it looks very natural to move this pawn forward and to attack your knight, but in fact this this is a decisive mistake. You will go knight c6, taking the queen and the bishop. After the bishop takes, you take by the queen. It's check and black can't certainly play queen d7 because the rook on the a8 is hanging. Um, also, if black goes knight d7, you will take this pawn on the g7, so this is bad for black as well. That's why probably black has to play king of 8, but of course it's very bad. With the king stuck in the center, you can play just knight c3, finish the development, and you'll get, I think, just winning position. So this is a tricky variation. You're hoping for the black's move c5, which is a big mistake. Of course, instead of c5, black should go d5 here. But still, you have an interesting option. You can go knight f5, uh, taking the pawn and the bishop. That's why black has to capture the knight. Queen takes f5. Black will play castle. Here, I recommend that you play knight d2. This prevents black from playing knight e4. And again, though the position is about equal, but I think that it's slightly better for white, because you will 
finish the development of Tour Castling, and then you will use the weak pawns of black in the center and on the queen side. You can play c4, open the c file, you will put your rooks on the c1 and on the d1, and you will attack the black central weak pawns. This is your plan, it's simple and effective. Let's analyze the next variation. b3, e5, bishop b2, taking the pawn, knight c6, e3, and here we analyze the move knight f6. And I think that you have seen a few interesting options for white, and you have a few tricky lines and a few good positions where you have a clear middle game plan. Except knight f6, of course, black has a very natural move d5, and a lot of your opponents will play. It looks very natural, it looks good for black to take the center, but in fact, this gives white even greater possibilities for developing an attack. Because right now, after the move bishop b5, white starts to attack the pawn on the e5, and black can't protect it with the move d6 anymore. That's why here white has good possibilities for developing an initiative. Okay, black will play bishop d6 probably. Now you play knight f3, taking the pawn again. Black can't move it forward because you will take the pawn on the g zone and you will then win the rook. That's why black needs to protect this pawn. He can do it by the move queen is on, which is the most logical move, or by the move f6. f6 weakens his position, and that's why it's not so good. Queen is on looks better. Here you have two interesting possibilities. c4 or d4. You know that your idea is to attack the black center. You allow black to create a good pawn center, but then you're going to attack it, by your pieces and by your pawns. So that's why both of these moves, c4 and d4, are logical. Both of them undermine the black center. First, let's take a look at the move c4. It looks like you're taking the pawn on the d5, and that's why he will play an knight f6, protecting this pawn. But you have one another idea. You can play c5 suddenly. And after bishop takes, you will take the pawn on the e5. This allows you to destroy the black center very quickly and easily. Also, you're taking the pawn on uh, the knight on the c6, and also you can play d4 in the future, fixing your good knight on the e5. Also, you can play queen c2, increasing the pressure on the c file, on the black knight on the c6. So this situation is quite good for you. By the way, after c4. If black takes there, you will take by the b-pawn, of course you don't want to move your bishop back, and here you still have the same threat of the, of the move c5. c4 was one interesting option for white. But nevertheless, I recommend you to use another one, which is the move d4. I think it's more logical, all your previous moves attack the black's pawn on the e5, and that's why now it's logical to continue this plan and to play d4. Okay, what black can do here? He can take there on the d4 or he can play e4. If he takes there, he can take by the knight or by the queen, which is probably even more aggressive. You're taking the pawn on the g zone. After knight f6, you can play knight c3, taking the pawn on the d5. By the way, it's a little trick, because it looks like black can castle here, but it's not, because you will take the pawn on the d5 anyway, winning this pawn. Now let's go forward, knight takes d4, knight takes e7, bishop takes, you will take on the d4, and what is a pawn up? By the way, this variation clearly illustrates the white's idea, the white's idea of his opening, of the first move b3. You see that though black created the center, but now it becomes rather a weakness than a power of his position. And this gives white a lot of possibilities to attack those central pawns. Okay, except e takes d4, he can play e4. You can now go forward, 
knight e5. I'm taking the knight on the c6. At the first side it looks like a blunder because black can take there on the e5, d takes and play queen b4 check. But it's not because you will play knight c3. And this protects the bishop on the b5 so black can't win the material here. Actually after d takes e5 black appears in some troubles. You are taking the pawn on the d5 by your queen. The only move for black is bishop e6. You will play knight c3, attacking this pawn again. Now we can see that the queen is misplaced on the e zone, and black can't make a normal development move knight e zone. Instead, he should play rook d8. Again, this is the only move to protect the pawn on the d5. Now he can suddenly play queen d4. And, well, it's quite a sudden threat because you are taking the pawn on the a zone. After a6, you will take the arrow on the c6. And now you can just castle or you can attack those pawns. Right now you can play queen a4 or queen a7 and black has no way to protect those pawns. So you have an advantage here also. Let's go from the beginning again. b3, e5, bishop b2, knight c6, e3, d5. This is what we are analyzing. Bishop b5, taking the pawn, bishop d6, knight f3, queen e7, d4, e4, knight e5. Since bishop takes e5 is bad for black, black should play bishop d7. Here you can take an opponent's bishop, which is good. This gives you an advantage of two bishops. Knight takes, queen takes. And in this position it looks logical to play c4, continuing attacking the black center. But it's not the best move because after a6 <coughs> your bishop appears in some trouble. You don't want to take on the c6 and lose your bishop. If you go bishop a4 this will be out of game, it does nothing there really. And that's why instead of playing c4 right away, it's better to first retreat with the bishop to play bishop e2, and on the next move you will definitely play c4. After c4 and knight c3, you will attack the black central pawns d5 and e4. And that's why here very often black will play knight e7, trying to support his central pawns after c4 and c6. And now the one good option which you have is that you can play bishop a3. Right now or maybe a little bit later in the middle game and you can easily exchange your bad bishop on an opponent's good one. Also you can prepare this move by playing queen c1 and then you will play bishop a3 and after an exchange you will have the queen on the a3 which will stand quite active there suddenly. Of course you will castle, you will play knight c3, rook c1 and you will attack in the center and on the queen side. You can see that this position is something like French defense with the changed colors and I think that is good for you. Again, I'm not saying that white has a great advantage here, but it's good for you. Okay, let's go back. Now we will see another similar line which happens after b3, e5, bishop b2, knight c6, e3, d5, bishop b5, taking the pawn, using the pin, bishop d6, knight f3, and here, as we already know, except queen e7, black can play f6. But your plan is still the same and it doesn't change too much really. You will play d4. Uh, taking on the d4 is a mistake. After queen takes, you will then attack the black's weaknesses in the center on the king side in the middle game, and that's why it's bad for black. He should play e4. Now you will go knight e2. He will do something like knight e7 maybe, or f5, or anything else, but it doesn't matter. In any case, you will do the same thing as we have seen previously. You can go back bishop e2 and then play c4. Actually, in this position, you can play c4 right now also, and this is normal. After a6, you can even take on the c6. 
in the future you will attack the black's weaknesses on the queen side, you can still play queen c1, put in the pressure on the c-file and prepare in bishop a3. This is what you can play here. As well, you can retreat, you can play bishop e2 first and you will then play c4. By the way, the one quite popular mistake for black here is the move knight e7, because after c4 uh, you will threaten in c5, capturing the black's bishop. This is a sudden threat and quite often your opponent can just make a blunder and oversight the move. c5. Okay, let's do it once again, b3, e5, bishop b2, and here we analyze the move knight c6. Of course black can also go d6 or e4, but it doesn't matter really, it doesn't change too much. If black goes e4 in this position or in any other similar situation, it only helps you because you will play d3 and you will destroy the black center very easily. An e4 pawn is close to your position and that's why you can attack it very easily. So e4 in this position and in any other positions are is usually not a good idea for black. If black goes d6 here, you see that we already analyzed quite similar positions before. You will play e3 and then d4. You can play d4 immediately or you can prepare it by playing knight f3 first. So when your opponent has the pawns on the e5 and on the d6, which restrict an activity of your bishop on the b2, you should play d4 and make this bishop active again. This bishop wants to have a long diagonal. If black goes f5, you can go d4 here, taking the pawn, and after e4 you can even push d5. And now your bishop really has a very good power on this long diagonal. Uh, the typical maneuvers for your pieces are knight h3 and then it will go to the f4 and in the future maybe to the e6 in some variations. Well, the bishop from the f1 may be placed actually anywhere. You can go bishop b5, trying to exchange light squared bishops, or you can just put it on the e2. The knight from the b1 will certainly go to the c3. So in this position also everything is quite good. In the future you can attack the black's pawn by playing f3. And I like the white's position. I think it's about equal, but nevertheless you have more initiative position. Okay. Let's finish right now, I don't want to make this lesson too long. So here we analyze the first move b3 and then the black's response e5. In the next part of this lesson I will tell you about the black's possible move d5 here and about other possibilities which black can use in this position. I think that you already have seen that the b3 move is not so inoffensive as it looks and as most players think. That's why you can try to play it, and let me know about your results in the commentaries. Thanks for your attention.